Hello data pros, and welcome back to another exciting episode of our Apache Airflow series. In our last video, we demonstrated the power of data-aware scheduling and cross-DAG dependencies. Today, we'll explore how to manage the flow of tasks in Airflow, a critical step in orchestrating efficient data pipelines. With the default Airflow settings, a task is executed only when all its dependencies complete successfully. However, in real-world projects, customizing this default behavior becomes essential to address a vast number of use cases. For example, you might need to dynamically pick and run a specific branch depending on the outcome of a preceding task, while skipping the remaining branches. The branch Python operator facilitates this feature by allowing you to select a branch through a user-defined Python function. Within this function, you can implement the logic to determine the appropriate branch and should ensure that it returns the task ID of the downstream task to be executed next. All the code lines I demonstrated in this video are provided in the description as a link. Now, let's move on to executing it in the Airflow UI. Everything proceeded smoothly, and this is exactly what I need to accomplish. In another scenario, you may want to trigger a specific task only if all of its predecessor tasks have failed. This is where Airflow trigger rules come into play. So far, we haven't explicitly coded trigger rules in our DAGs, that's because by default, Airflow considers the all-success trigger rule for your tasks. However, you can modify this behavior by specifying trigger rule parameters for your tasks as demonstrated here. With over 10 different types of trigger rules available, you have the flexibility to customize task runs according to your specific use case. Now, let's validate it in the Airflow UI. Great, it works perfectly. As we progress, consider a scenario where you must perform initial setup and final cleanup tasks such as starting a cluster at the beginning of the pipeline and stopping it at the end. These two steps are necessary regardless of the outcomes of the tasks in between. This dependency definition code over here sets one of my tasks named create cluster as the setup task and the delete cluster task as the teardown task. Now, let's witness it in the UI. Cool, this is exactly what we expected. Moving further, for backfill scenarios, where historical data is processed, you may find it valuable to selectively skip certain steps in the pipeline. For example, you might want to avoid sending a job completion email when the pipeline is run for a backfill scenario. This approach prevents flooding your mailbox with a large number of emails, especially if the backfill spans over a significant number of days. This feature is achieved by creating a dummy task with the latest only operator. Any task that you place as a successor of this dummy task will be executed only for the current day run, and specifically not for backfill runs. For the purpose of this demo, I've set up a catch-up window of just three days. Let's observe how it works in the UI. As you can see, the email step was triggered only for the last run, which is for today's date. Lastly, imagine a scenario where a task should only run if its previous execution instance has completed successfully. Perhaps, you wouldn't want to execute today's task if yesterday's run has failed, and the root cause has not yet been addressed. All that you've to do is set that depends on past parameter to true in the specific task. That's all for today. Stay tuned for our next video where we'll explore more advanced airflow features. Please do like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you've any questions or thoughts, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.